Hey everybody, it's late fall. The water temperatures are dropping. The air temperature is definitely dropping. And these walleyes out here have the fall feeding binge on. Great time to be out here. I'm here with my buddy, Josh Wiesner, the champ. We're gonna go out and whack on them today, huh? I sure hope so, I am jacked up. Oh yeah, well here we go. We're about to bring you the next bite. Fishing rivers in the fall can provide some of the best fishing of the year. The best place to start looking for walleyes in current areas are eddies. These areas are created by structure where faster current can hit a point or a rock and behind those pieces of structure is an area of slack water. That area does two things. It creates a pocket of water that is very easy for a walleye to sit and not expend that much energy, unlike the main current. But it is also a spot that is a natural funnel where more bait will be floating by in the current, making it a place to feed without much effort. There he is. Good one. Feels decent. It's not a giant, but it's oh, a nice one. There he goes. Yeah, it's not nice a bad job. sauger, eh? Is it sauger? Yeah. Okay. You know what's interesting? Oh, it's nice. Yeah, it's actually. Uh, you can see the yeah. see the black dots there. Yeah. It's actually a saw guy. You can see it kind of has the walleye colorings, yeah. but this is kind of what gives it away. And then there's a little bit different patch of uh, scales on the cheek, but it's still got the little white tail too. On it. Yeah, there's a lot of saw guy in this system, but there's also a lot of saugers. But you know, this is a smaller male, but there are some giant saw guys in here. We haven't yeah. seen any yet, but sure. they're super aggressive and obviously fun to catch. And he was all over that gulp. Smoked it, loved it. <laughs> When on a river, there will be a lot of floating debris. Even more specific, there will be a lot of leaves floating with the current. In this specific instance, in a low water year with slow moving current, Tom and Josh are able to fish the entire river and are moving down current just slightly faster than the leaves. And it's triggering a lot of fish to bite using the visuals from the river to help with speed control. This might not work in every instance, but it's something that should be tried next time the opportunity presents itself on a river with slower current. So when we're talking about late fall river situations, we're dealing with fish that are putting the feed bag on. They're, they're feeding heavily on easy targets. The water temperature, water temperatures are cold, so the fish don't wanna have to work real hard necessarily to chase down a bait. So what I like to do is I actually like to bulk up in this situation, which is kind of opposite of what you'd think. A lot of times water gets colder, you go smaller. I like to go bigger. The fish are feeding on those, those young of the year sheep's head, which are about the four inch size. So this four inch gulp minnow absolutely is the perfect profile for it. Not only is it the right profile, but with that added scent in this cold water, it, it's definitely the deal. There he is. Oh man, that thing smoked Good one, it. Tom. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh man, yeah, this is, this is definitely a good one here. Oh yeah. Yep, good fish. Just crushed it. Where are you at, Wiesner? Get him, get him, get him. Nice. <laughs> nice one, Tom. <laughs> Look at that fish. Yeah, he hit it hard. <laughs> Four inch gulp, I'll tell you what. They just absolutely blast that thing this time of year. It looked like it. I didn't even get my rod in. <laughs> that is sweet. I mean, it just absolutely whack. All right, awesome. Sweet. What a nice fish. <laughs> the next bite.
is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Schaefer's Specialized Lubricants. Putting equipment first. Tracker Boats. Fish the finest. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Berkeley. Catch more fish. And Power Pole Total Boat Control. Closed captioning for the next bite is provided by Precision Trolling Data, the authority for crankbait diving depth information. When on a river, you need to be prepared for every situation. Because of the current, the conditions are constantly changing and you never know what you'll run into. The water could be clean with no snags or full of timber and dirty. There he is. Got one? Yeah. Good one? Feels like a pretty nice fish, Josh. It's another about 18 inch here. here. Buddy. Ready? Get him. Got him. Nice job. <laughs> oh, nice one, Tom. <laughs> I, I'm, uh, it's crazy. Like, I'm, I'm completely locked up here. These fish hit so hard. I know. It's just insane. And, and the crazy thing is I've caught so many of these vertical jigging but every one of these bites is like, it's just, it's so awesome. And look at that. <laughs> that they jig crush is just it. gone. I mean, even the little ones yeah, fight I mean, like they're five pounds. They so. absolutely, you know, fall is the time, man. These fish are, their metabolisms are still high. They're bulking up for winter and they're absolutely just, just feeding like crazy. I mean, look at that thing. Four inch gulp, man. Good time. Love that stuff. Nice fish. It's a good solid 18 and a half, 19 incher. Awesome. Let's get her back. There you go. There's two different ways to set up your rods for a vertical jigging river situation. One being straight braid right to your bait. And where that comes into play is if you're in super snaggy waters, logs, heavy rocks, and you're snagging up all the time and you're breaking off. That way it's way easier to just retie right to the new jig and it's fast. The second way is going from braid to a barrel swivel to about a foot, foot and a half liter of fluorocarbon. Where this comes into play is you eliminate your line twist and it also is way more durable and abrasive resistance with the fluorocarbon. Another hot tip that we don't talk about too often is fluorocarbon is a lot stiffer line. So when you tie on a jig to braid and a jig to fluorocarbon, they have two different complete actions. So if a fish is really aggressive and they want more of an action, they might want the braid set up more than the fluorocarbon. So keep that in mind and you'll put more fish in the bowl. There he is, Josh. Got one? Yeah, there he is, nice fish. Where are you at, Wiesner? Right here. Come on, little boy, oh, yeah, nice fish. There we go, nice fish. Woo, the old nose is starting to run. Yeah. Look at that fish. Nice one. What a stud. It's got some weird stuff on it there, hey? See that? A weird girl. Yeah. Just spanked it though. We were just coming off of that big clump of wood down there on the bottom and right as I came off the back side, the thing just absolutely crushed it. Nice. Sweet. Control presented by PowerPole. 20 years of trust evolved from total boat control. Hey, one of the things I want to talk a little bit about is maintenance. And not necessarily boat and outboard maintenance like we've talked a lot about in the past, but tool maintenance. And many times what anglers do, if they're gonna put their boat in storage over the winter, or maybe they sold their boat in the fall and they're getting a new boat in the spring, is take their tools out of the boat, throw them in a bin, and don't look at them again. And of course what happens when you come to the spring when it's time to go fishing, you look at your tools, they're all rusted, they're all corroded, you gotta buy a whole new set of them. So one thing that you can do is before you store your tools, just do some maintenance on them and something like this Schaefer's Penetro 90 right here. And what this is, is this is basically just a corrosion inhibitor, okay? And I'm gonna just go through all my tools and spray on all the hinges, all the joints, 
making sure that everything's lubricated very well on all my tools before I put them away. Very, very simple process, simple application. But the nice thing about this product is it's not solvent based, it's oil based. So it's going to last longer. It's going to help those tools not rust up, keep the corrosion off of them, keep them working well when it comes to spring. Now I also use this product on a bunch of my other equipment as well too. My boat trailers, specifically the coupler area, you know, even your wheel jacks. My enclosed trailer, I use it on all my door hinges because in the, you know, in the winter, you're dealing with a lot of salt, my enclosed trailer, all those different uh, basically hinges and accessories on that trailer rust up very easily. So this Penetro 90 helps you out really well there too. So as an angler, maintenance is a huge thing on your boat and outboard, but it's also a huge thing to do simple applications with something like this Penetro 90 to keep all your equipment running top notch anytime you want to use it. Color choice is a very important thing to keep in mind when you're fishing. And as conditions change, you want to be able to change as fast as you can to get more fish in the boat. Today it was cloudy early and the more natural color definitely outperformed the brighter colors. But as the sun came up higher and the clouds cleared, um, the chartreuse and white was definitely a better fit. So keep that in mind when you're fishing. As, as conditions change, you need to change and you'll definitely put more fish in the boat. Color changes are a huge part of a day of fishing, but having a bunch of open gulp bags can be a nuisance. Tom has a great way to handle that problem, making use out of every last plastic. You know, one thing that I like to do with my gulp to extend the life of it and get a little bit more out of each package is at the end of the day, when you've got a pack that's, you know, say only has two or three minnows left in it, um, I don't like to just reseal that. What I like to do actually is I carry a Tupperware container that has a, a nice seal on it. And what I do with those is I actually will fill that Tupperware container up with some of this recharge and then just take that bag that just has one or two minnows left in it and I'll dump that in this container. And what that does is it keeps the bait nice and fresh and once again it just extends the life out of that gulp minnow for me. There he is. Good one? Ah, another like about a 15 inch or so. Nice. Chunky though. Just cracked it. Decent. Oh yeah, that is decent. I'm just gonna bring him right up here. Yeah. I'm gonna stay right up here, Josh. How is he? Yeah. Pretty decent? Yeah. I'm gonna get him right here. Nice one, Josh. Yeah. It's another really nice solid fish. Probably 18. Look at that thing, another 17 and a half, 18 inch fish, nice and fat. Look at that. Yeah, gone. White. Orange gulp. Just out destroyed. Out of, <laughs> out of white. Yeah, I'm gonna let you take that because yeah, it's trying to got... chew my index <laughs> finger off. But yeah, they're absolutely eating that. Uh, that way. It's actually pearl silver is what they call that one. Awesome color on any any river system. That's a great starting color for it's sure. It's amazing how aggressive they are with 39 degree water <laughs> temperature. You know? Yeah, they are crushing it, huh? Yeah. Let's get that back. Okay. The setup that I was using today is a 7.2 medium extra fast rod. Now what's important about this is the extra fast tip. In vertical jigging, I always want that. The reason being is that I don't have to put a lot of lift into that rod in order to get into the backbone. That's a big deal because a lot of times you're, you're working the jig up and down to follow the contours or even in your jigging stroke. But with that extra fast tip, that gets you right into the back corner of the rod quickly and drives that jig home, which is super important. The other thing is, I really like six pound braid or fire line in this situation. The reason being is the six pound is fairly easy to break off without putting a lot of stress on your gear. In a river type deal like we're, we're at today, there's plenty of things that get stuck on the bottom and I'd rather just quickly break off than have to 
fight whatever's on the bottom. So I prefer that six pound braid. Plus it cuts through the wind and the water a lot easier also. There he is. Good one. Yeah, this is a nice one, Josh. Good fish. This is a nice one. Oh, oh nice got it. Job. You see it? <laughs> see what I'm talking about? <laughs> that is a nice, look at that fish. That's a chunk. That is a false stud right there. Look at the belly on it. Just in here gorging on uh, sheep's head. That's where that four inch gulp minnow comes in to play big time. They can't resist that thing. What a nice fish. All right, man, let's get right, her back. Let's get another one. Nice fish. The next bite is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Schaefer's Specialized Lubricants, putting equipment first. Tracker Boats, fish the finest. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, your adventure starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish. Lawrence, find, navigate, dominate. And Power Pole Total Boat Control. <laughs> Topics, leading information and tackling techniques to make you a better angler. Presented by Mercury. This is the time of year where shoreline casters really uh, con kind of come into their own. This is late fall. As you can see, there's even some snow flurries uh, around today. Maybe, maybe can't see that, but it's, it is snowing a little bit. Uh, late fall and then again early in the spring after ice out, shoreline casters do well. Walleyes like to move in close to shore. Uh, during those times. I, I want to just talk for just a minute about the rod and reel setup for this. And you know, one of my favorites is the Johnny Morris Platinum Signature Series rods. I like to use them because they're 7-1, gives me the length to be able to cast a lighter bait out. They're quite stiff through the main frame of the rod. And I like that because once I do get a fish on, I can really hit them with the hooks. And walleyes in particular have really hard mouths, especially the bigger ones. And sometimes you need to have that extra oomph to get them in, to get it into their mouths. But the other thing that I really like is a super soft tip. It allows me to fight the fish. It allows the flex of the rod to be able to get those long casts that I'm looking for. I couple that then with the 2000 series reel and basically it's a very nice setup. It's not very heavy. I can cast it all day long, but it gives me the right action. Uh, couple the reel with eight or 10 pound fire line and away you go. I do most of my cranking uh, on spinning gear with fire line. It allows me to fit, feel every vibration of the bait. It allows me, me to feel if a fish misses so I know when to stop. Uh, I can tell every rock, I can tell when there's a weed on it. So it's a, just an extremely nice setup. Breaking down a fall bite on a river system can seem daunting, but heading into the situation prepared can provide you with some of the best fishing of the year. Here Got we go. one? Yeah. Nice fish too. Yeah, it's a good one. Oh yeah, this is a nice fish. Here he comes. Nice yes. job. Just a really solid fish, eh? It's like a 19 incher, huh? 18, 19, nice yeah. Solid yeah. fish. 18, 19? Yeah. I think it's more like 19. I think it might be 17. Oh, unbelievable, this guy. <laughs> Let's get this one back. Having a few different options for rods, line, and baits for the different conditions you might find in a river system is a top priority for Tom and Josh. Yeah, I got us. I'm. I'm Oh, I can't see. No way. Oh man, that's a good one. Thing just Chaos. throttled it. Oh yeah. Is that Sauger? I don't know what it is. It's a good one. Here he comes. Oh yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Jeez. Hey, where's that jig at? It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> like that fish. Oh my. <laughs> That is a good one right there, and the gulp is gone. Yeah, I'd say uh, I'd say that's the deal, no, isn't it? No, I need the players in this game. <laughs> Let me grab you one here. 
I'll tell you what. This has been. Out of there. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Josh. This has been just an absolutely awesome fall day. I mean, yeah. we've got some weather coming in. These fish are definitely putting on the, the big time binge right before uh, things get really nasty here. But yep. that is right there. That is an absolute river beast right yep, there. Absolutely. Look at that thing. Just clobbered That's got to be about a seven pounder, seven, maybe more. Seven and a half, eight pounds, I would say. Yeah, Yeah, that is an awesome fish. Look yeah. at that. You got to love these fall fish. Yep. Hey, man, great day. Yep. Let's get that one back. All right, sounds good. That is a nice fish, Josh. That is a nice fish. She ready to go? Just about, I think. <laughs> she was fighting. She fought pretty hard. Oh, yeah. There she goes. Yep. And the chartreuse in white ended up playing. I gotta start that over. And we'll definitely put more fish in the boat if you decide. Let's do it over again. Color does matter. And you'll definitely put more fish in the boat. Look at this right here. Look at this, Josh. What is happening here? Look at this. You nailed it. Put a lot better. Yep, no, it's not gonna put anything, it's gonna... All right, one more time. There's one, Tom. Good one, Jack? Good one. I don't know what it is. It's a good one. Here he comes. Oh, yeah. Nice! Hey, that's a sauger. He just whacked it. Whacked it. It's crazy how hard these fall fish bite. I mean, it's 38 degree water temperature, too. Yeah, it's... Uh... I mean, that's a nice sauger. Anywhere oh, yeah. you go, you know. Absolutely, that's a 20, flare up like that. That's a 20-inch sauger for sure. Nice Skinny fish. male. It hasn't yeah. really put on a bunch of weight yet, but yeah, but nice fish. Super nice fish. There he goes. Nice job, man. Thanks, buddy. This is the real deal out here. Yeah, right? they're crushing it. 